in a moment of silence, remembering the wife of our Vice Chairman Robert and Serpy, Paula and Serpy, who passed away last Thursday. <coughs> Would you please sure. uh, lead us in the invocation? There. Father, we ask your blessings to be on our gathering this morning. We pray, God, that you would continue to give us the wisdom and guidance that we need, Lord, as we uh, address what's on our agenda. And, Lord, we want to pause just for a moment here to remember Robert. We pray, God, that you would place your hand upon him, surround him today and in the days ahead as he's going through this season of grief. And um, we just pray that the beatitude... Uh, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Lord, let that become a reality to him and his family as they walk through this time. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice, justice for all. Roll call, please. Robert and Serpy. Barbara Craig. Here. Russ Wynn. Here. Herman Curlander. Here. Richard Donnelly. Roger Brunswick. Here. James Worcester. Here. Before we begin uh, our public hearing, I'd like to introduce you to our, uh, our newest member, Dr. Barbara Craig. Uh, Dr. Craig received her PhD at the University of Connecticut and before that, she has a Master of Public Administration and Public Policy also from the University of Connecticut. Uh, she served in the, uh, at Wesleyan University as a full professor and chair of the Department of Government for 20 years. Uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Barbara Craig. Thank also, you so much. Uh, we did not uh, know that uh, Barbara Barnes Buchanan was going to resign. And after she announced her resignation, we had a hiatus of several months with no hearing. So we have never had an opportunity to, uh, to thank her for her service. And uh, somewhat belatedly, uh, Barbara, uh, we wish you best of, of luck in Orlando and we thank you for your years of service uh, to the Bonita Springs community. And with that, uh, I would uh, call on Mike Figon for our public hearing. At this time, the applicant has not um, made it here. We, uh, Mr. Figon did try to reach him. If we could have a short continuance for the applicant to start before the case is presented, of course, they have the burden of proof to go forward. So if they're not here, we have due process issues as well as um, evidentiary proceeding issues for if, timing. If they're not here, they're not here, right? I mean, we well, they may be do wish to or continue yeah, the we'll, case. Yeah, we'll give them an opportunity. Okay, we, there, there's no problem. We, we, will, uh, we will pause now. But while we're doing that, I'd like to take this opportunity, uh, with your permission, Council, to talk about the upcoming workshop. Um, on February 23rd, uh, there is a workshop which uh, this board first proposed about nine months ago. It's been a uh, problem uh, getting it scheduled as our special counsel has been overwhelmed with litigation and other things. I want to say about this workshop, this is our one opportunity uh, to get this right. Uh, we are hopeful that you will all attend and participate. I have been working with Fred Forbes. You will recall that after we proposed this, you authorized me to go to city council and to invite them to participate uh, in the workshop. They designated Councilman Forbes uh, to work with me on your behalf we had a couple of meetings where we talked about, uh, where we asked for your input. Several of you have given input. 
And uh, we, uh, Councilman Forbes and I are awaiting a call with uh, David Theriak, the lead counsel, who will be making the presentation. I want to recall for you the three things that this board felt were the most critical <coughs> to have at this workshop. First, what's the current state of the law? What is it that an applicant is required to present to us? And uh, what is it that we are required to do having received that information? And when we speak to, uh, to David Theriak, uh, I'd like to spend about an hour on that. It is what it is. Uh, many of you are very familiar with it. And uh, the second thing is, where should we go from here? And connected to that is the third thing. What are the best practices? What are the best practices, and limit it to our neighborhood. What are the best practices in Naples? What are the best practices in Fort Myers, Estero? Maybe go up to Sarasota, maybe pick a place on the East Coast, but tell us what the best practices are. And then finally, what changes should we make to the land development code especially? Um, when I came on the board, I read the, the thing. I'd been reading the law for almost 55 years now, and I frankly found it almost incomprehensible. Uh, there, I, I just, it was, took me four months and it really, it really needs, amount. it really needs more. And you're a lawyer. Yes. <laughs> yes, I've been reading for uh, 55 years now. And, uh, uh, Welcome to our world. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know how you're able to do your jobs uh, not being lawyers. Uh, it, it's very, very difficult. Uh, and uh, so I have always questioned uh, since I've been here, I have found it terribly confusing because oftentimes I don't know what I'm voting on. It's very vague. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that things are pushed to the back in our law in Benita Springs. The decision-making power lies with Director Dolmer and his staff. They come here, and you will recall we had someone come. I might put a hotel here, but maybe it'll be an assisted living facility. How many rooms? Well, I really haven't decided that yet. What, what about parking? Well, we'll talk about that at the development order stage. And then uh, I may put 100,000 feet of uh, office space, uh, but maybe it's 50,000, and I'll add retail. And I might put a yarn shop in. I might put a gas station in. I will put a gas station in, uh, you know, I'm on the corner of so-and-so. And, and, and at the end of it, you say, what are we voting on? Mm -hmm. And the answer is that under our law, that appears to be proper. But is it right? Uh, I've always wondered whether there's been an unconstitutional delegation from the elected officials to the bureaucrats. But that's a larger question we don't have to go to. But there's clearly been a delegation to make the major decisions. And uh, I, I, I think that I'm speaking for everybody and seeing if we can't push the, uh, the decision making to the city council upon our recommendation. Not taking, they would have the same work to do, but they would be working with us as well as working with the, uh, the developer, the applicant. And uh, as part of that, uh, there are a number of issues that have been raised. And uh, what I'm uh, fearful of at this meeting is that we get into the weeds. And we have to struggle to keep this workshop on the big picture so that we can have David Theriak tell us what are the best practices how should we change our code? 
So for, let me give you an example. Some people think uh, we should have a design review board. Now we could sit and we could get caught in the trap of should we have it and spend eight hours talking about a design review. Maybe that's for another time. There may be a way to simplify that and not create another bureaucracy, uh, but simply have this body have a requirement that you have architects on, on, on this board. And maybe we could do a lot of that design work as a board. Uh, member uh, Donnelly has often uh, voiced his concerns. I don't see anything. Nothing, you know. I, I, I'm told that before I got here, somebody asked at the city council level to see what the, what the design was. They picked out a yellow piece of paper and drew a line and said, that's where it's gonna be. And basically, we, 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 up until today, we, we, we would get pictures. They were never legible. They were not in conformity. And I want to thank uh, I like the John print. Dolmer. <laughs> we now have the most complete <laughs> <laughs> architectural uh, renderings and plans, site plans. plans. I mean, it's really, uh, Mike, you've done a terrific job. And uh, it's frustrated me. Uh, I've never been able to read a single word on, uh, on those papers. <laughs> this is wonderful. You've done a great job. We've changed the format of how the, pre it's the presentation. It's actually what the law requires, so that's good. To yes, the, uh, <laughs> amazing. Yes, the law actually, does require actually, it. Actually, it does require it. <laughs> how strange. <laughs> I would just like to make one comment that what, what interests me and probably why I agreed to serve here was the fact that we are a quasi-judicial body making decisions that are supposed to be uh, based on a record. And there are some issues that I have with that, and I was hoping that this workshop would be able to talk about the sorts of things that under the law we are required to decide, that we are, it is assumed that our decisions are based on those things, and yet some of that information, as you point out, isn't available to, to us. So how can we make it so we can perform the job that under the law we're supposed to perform. So, so that's the conversation that I hope we can have in that. We'll so we could set time. aside, uh, we could set aside somewhere during the course of the workshop a period of time <clears throat> where we can have our specific concerns addressed. But I would like David to take us through the whole thing. This is our one shot, folks. They're not gonna give us another shot at this. <laughs> and we really need uh, an update. I think John, uh, I've been working with him. He's been very, very helpful, extraordinarily helpful in gi giving uh, me guidance and show kind of giving me the roadmap, as has Mike and uh, Jackie and the rest of the staff. Um, and he would be the first to tell you that changes in order. We really, we really need to change. Well, most things like a land development code grow like topsy. They keep adding things into it. That's and right. And there's mm -hmm. not ever the chance to do an overview that says, how do all these things now hang together? And I think it's appropriate every so often to stop and say, let's look at the whole and look where there are contradictions and look where cl clarity could be better. Absolutely. Put into place. So that would be what I would be concerned about. John wanted to say something. John, did you, oh, please, John, why don't you? Uh, I was just ready in case there are any questions, but uh, excellent point. No one ever goes back in and calls old regulations. Yeah, and it's but appropriate to do that now and then. We, we are very free with adding new ones as we go along. That's correct. Um, I'll talk to you about your specific questions so we make sure that they're covered and the information is at least available. I don't okay. want uh, us to go through this exercise only to leave somebody with unmet expectations. Uh, so if there are things you want to discuss, feel free to let me know. They're probably going to have a lot of overlap with other concerns, but I don't want anybody to be left out. Um, in addition to that, yes, I agree. I think that it's time to take a philosophical look at how we process these applications and what everyone's role uh, we want to be and what our responsibilities are. The current process had its reasoning. So there was a reason why it was set up the way it was. But I think that reason was for a different day. So. 
now let's take a look at what fits us for where we are and where we want to go. So, Thank you. John, were you able to reach David Theriak? I will try to, I unfortunately actually got in contact with him before I spoke uh, with you yesterday. Right. Uh, so I sent him an email. I have not heard back. I expect that I'm probably 347th on the list of him to respond to. I will try to call him today, but calling him twice in one day I, I was a, probably a little excessive for his first day back from international travel. I'll try him again today to make sure that we're I on I spoke to him about the workshop yesterday as far as brainstorming and what's necessary. So, But I will, I will make sure that we are. Do you, can we participate in that discussion? Fred well, we I? were talking trial strategy with some other stuff. We, oh, just, okay. we just glanced on it for a few seconds that we're going to brainstorm in, in a little well, bit she, yeah. as sure. to how okay. he's going to proceed. He's just giving me basically his agenda. Um, I'm proceeding and whether it's him or Brent Spain and I'm trying to tack you on to a phone call that we have already set up for this week yeah so. uh, councilman Ford is very eager to have that phone yes, call. sir he, he said the same of you sir <laughs> pardon me he said the same of you oh yes yeah I mean we, we've got to know what's happening here what what he plans to do so uh, sir are you the applicant I am the applicant. okay welcome I, I apologize for my tardiness it seems I confuse this board and the fall of city council at 9 30 in my calendar no problem ah, that makes sense. okay so uh any, any other comments about the the workshop no that's nope. once again it's the 23rd right it's the 23rd you'd at like to get started at eight eight just want to be sure oh, and okay. it will end at four okay on pain of my wife's Could we wrath. bring a sandwich? My, That's a long <laughs> my daughter and son-in-law are coming into town. We, we have food the coming. the 23rd, and what? we really want to see them. Okay. Just a quick note before we get going. That, I look, is a perfect opportunity for us to take a very broad look at our philosophy and our approach. That does not mean it's our only topic or only time to have this conversation. You can always call me. We can always have a discussion on what needs to be improved and how we need to do it. So while this is going to be one day that we focus on it, it does not mean that that's the end. After that day passes, we can still have conversations about how we're going to carry that forward. So, uh, Okay. That's great. You've been great, John. I, I really appreciate all the time uh, oh. you spend with me. Because My I, pleasure. Sometimes I feel I'm a slow learner here. And, oh, you know, no, just, no. You know it, it's very helpful. Uh, Figon, you want to uh, you want to swear the I, witnesses? I'll, let me start, if I may. Please. Thank you. For the record, Audrey Vance, City Attorney. I'm going to call the first case, which uh, is going to public hearing. The case name is Backwater Jacks at Benita Bay Marina. It's a it's a request for a consumption on premises um, expansion. The case uh, number is COP 1742357 BOS located at 27598 Marina Point Drive, Benita Springs, Florida, 34134. At this time, we'll swear in witnesses. Um, if I may have anybody who plans to testify in the case today, please raise your right hand. Now, if you're a citizen, you may want to testify. We will need to have you sworn in. You can either be sworn in now or later if you just want to observe at this time and not talk, I understand. But if you do want to, remind me we still need to have you sworn in. Um, do you swear or affirm testimony you provided to the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, so the first person is uh, the applicant, who is James Inc. He is a civil engineer um, with Inc. Works. He has been tendered as an expert before. Does this board wish to hear anything about his credentials? No, I'm good. Uh, okay, I would ask everybody that else good. tendered as an expert um, in engineering and marine design. I believe that's your specialty? That's my specialty, yes. Okay. Uh, the next person is Mike Figon. Mike is the planner. He is AICP. Are you? Okay. He, uh, not yet. He has testified before this board as an expert in land use and planning. I'd like to have him tendered as an expert. And uh, the other person is John Zolmer. He is AICP and he has testified numerous times before uh, this board, as well as other tribunals, including circuit court and city council and other jurisdictions. He also can be tendered as an expert in land use and planning. At this point, um, I believe the process would be the applicant to go forward to explain the representation and then uh, staff would give the report, or would you prefer be, uh, to give your report first? I would prefer staff to go first, because then I'm going to piggyback off their aerials to shorten the presentation. 
Okay, if that's the most efficient, is the board okay yeah, I, with that? I think that, uh, I don't know how, this, how the board feels, but uh, this is not the most difficult matter that's come before this board. It, it seems uh, pretty simple. So I don't, unless there's serious opposition, uh, you could give us the abbreviated version and we, we could ask questions. Uh, by way of disclosure, I live in Bonita Bay. I've been uh, active at the marina for a number of years. I know the owners of the marina, and I know the staff at the marina quite well. I've had no conversations about this matter with anyone. Okay, and under the ethics law, uh, uh, for people who live in Bonita Bay, which include Roger Brunswick and James Forster, uh, for people who live in Bonita Bay, uh, you would have to have a special gain under the ethics rules that, um, if you were going to be prohibited from hearing the case or voting. In that case, you would have to own at least 1% of the property in Bonita Bay or 1% of the marina. I'm going to make a guess none of you meet that threshold. You think? You think? <laughs> yeah, think? Yeah, about 2,000. You might need to own about 200 homes. Was it 200? Yeah, 200 homes. Or wait, 20 3, homes. 200. 20 of so you could there are some people it's what it's 2200 okay uh, it's possible but probably very remotely possible um, so there is no ethical issue um, if you do have ex parte communication please disclose it at this time so the applicant or staff can ask questions okay Mike Good morning, Mike Fegon for the record, here to present the uh, staff portion of this case and per Chairman Kurlander's request, we will try and keep this brief. I'll give you the abbreviated version of the abbreviated presentation. So we have our staff review team. The request itself uh, is to, uh, a special exception request to expand the outdoor consumption on premises to a proposed 360 square foot deck area ancillary to a group three restaurant pursuant to land development code chapter 4-1023 subsection a2 and staff is recommending approval the responsibilities of each party are laid out in the land development code the applicant has the responsibility in the application to provide us a legal description sketch confirmation of ownership agent authorization a location map mailing labels a justification and narrative a site plan a traffic or environmental statement if applicable and the application with the fee. The staff responsibility is to review that documentation provided for sufficiency, uh, perform the courtesy mailings uh, to the uh, property owners within a certain footage, uh, provide the staff report and the recommendation based on the special exception criteria. And as I'm sure you're familiar, the criteria that the staff report is written on and the criteria that the board uses to help make the recommendation is found within our land development code LDC 4-131 subsection C and D. So with that in mind, I will keep going through the abbreviated presentation, give you a clue of where we are here, where the star is, is where we're talking about as far as within the city, the Bonita Bay Marina. Oh, sorry, going too fast now. Zooming in a little bit more. We have Marina Point Drive here. And the restaurant, Backwater Jack's, is on the south side of the existing building. Backwater, Jock, uh, Backwater Jack's is an existing restaurant at this time. The site plan uh, that originally came in was part of a final plan approval process that took place uh, last summer and into last fall, where the marina was undergoing some renovations. With that, the restaurant was undergoing some renovations as well. And one of the requests that they had at the time was to uh, add a little outdoor area. And with the final plan approval that came in, there was a condition that was written in that said that uh, the applicant is put on notice that a special exception would be required if the intent is for that outdoor area, and that's what we were talking about originally, that little space right there, uh, if the intent was to be able to serve alcohol in that area. The request was later modified uh, instead of 225 square feet to be 360 square feet and now this shaded area is the area that we are talking about for the consumption on premises and the outdoor dining. That is what is currently being proposed. 
the seating plan that is being proposed, you can see what they're doing is they are taking a portion uh, that originally had 24 seats for the restaurant, creating an office, and the request is to remove or is to put those 24 seats uh, outside now. So there is no increase in seats in the restaurant. The seat count is staying the same. They're just shuffling where the location of these seats are going. And to zoom in a little bit more to make it nice and clear the area that we're talking about, it is the shaded area that is the scope of this specific special request. So why is the special exception needed? Well, we have standards within our land development code for consumption on premises that says that any establishment that's going to provide outdoor seating for its patrons, uh, and if they are within 500 feet of a religious facility, school, daycare, park, or a dwelling unit under separate ownership, they need to apply for a special exception. Uh, if you can go, if I can go back to the aerial, we are talking right about where the star is, and we do have residential units under separate ownership here and here, and in both of those cases, the distance is less than 500 feet. That's why we are here today. A brief history for you. Uh, the marina itself was built in 1998. The restaurant was effectively built in 1991. The most recent consumption on premises approval came from Lee County in 2002. However, as we discussed, there is a new seating area. And whenever you have a new seating area, you need to upgrade your alcohol permits. Uh, in this case, uh, because the permits are tied to seating charts and plans, and we have a code that requires a special exception if that's going to be outdoors within 500 feet of residential, religious facilities, daycare, schools. That's why we are here. Essentially what would happen is the applicant would bring forth a new state form for the city to sign for the alcoholic beverage license for uh, Backwater Jacks, and we would not be able to sign it if this was the site plan that they gave us because they do not have approval to be able to drink in this new 360 square foot proposed deck area. So that is the purpose of, of this process. There are no deviations being requested as part of this um, application other than that of following what the land development code specifies, which is request a special exception for the outdoor consumption on premises. So when I look at this subject case versus the special exception criteria that we utilize to make our recommendation, it does check all the boxes. Uh, consistency with the Bonita plan, the comprehensive plan category of moderate density mixed use plan development does allow for uh, commercial businesses to take place. The restaurant is existing, it's legally permitted, the use isn't changing, it's there. Uh, meeting or exceeding performance standards if applicable, again, it's an established restaurant, it's already there, and in fact, the restaurant itself already does have an outdoor seating area uh, right here screened covered dining seats. It's, it's screened and covered, but it technically counts as an outdoor seating area. But again, we are adding a new area under this request. Compatibility with existing or planned uses. It's existing uh, and, it, and is, is within the uh, guidelines of the Bonita Bay planned unit development resolution. Whether the request will cause damage, hazard, or nuisance. To that point, one of the conditions that we have been there, which we will get into, has to do with the noise ordinance. Uh, impact to environmental areas, it's existing, it's an existing space. Uh, impact on traffic, there is no net increase in seats, so there is no net impact on traffic. And adequate public facilities, it's existing, the restaurant's there, the facilities are there. So we have that, as well as the fact that on the north, south, east, and west, we do have required landscaping on all four sides including right-of-ways on the north, east, and west that buffer the proposed seating area from the neighboring residential. So with all of that, staff does recommend approval of this request to grant consumption on premises approval to include a proposed 360 square foot outdoor deck area subject to the following conditions. Uh, attachments A and B in your staff report will serve as the site plan in terms of location. Uh, and it's what staff will utilize for compliance with that outdoor deck area. So in other words, the square footage and the deck location needs to be in compliance with attachments A and B in your staff report. The hours of operation, we'll keep it in line with what's already there now for the Backwater Jacks restaurant, 
closed on Mondays, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 10 p.m., Friday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. We do have a condition that requires the applicant to revise their previous final uh, plan approval to reflect the new square footage. If you recall earlier in the presentation, the original request was for 225 square feet, and that's where we put them on notice. If you want that, you gotta go through the special exception process. Since it was modified, we feel it's appropriate for the applicant to go back and redo the final plan approval process to reflect the new square footage. Uh, condition four, uh, additional modifications not covered under this special exception will require additional approvals. The applicant has put on notice of that. And condition five, uh, the noise ordinance uh, will pertain to the subject property and remains in full force and effect. Uh, and that noise ordinance is enforced by the Lee County Sheriff's Office. There were no areas of disagreement between staff and the applicant based on the findings and the conditions that were presented. So with that, questions or comments of me or if you prefer to hear the applicant's testimony. Questions? I just see the applicant's testimony first and then I have, I have a question. Okay. Please. Uh, I uh, condition to the hours of operation. Yes. If those were to change, be extended, would they need to come back to this board for uh, another hearing or modification? What would happen? There are two ways to do it. One would be if it was a temporary, it would get a special events permit. If they wanted to have, say, something on a, um, on Monday or something that goes beyond 10 o'clock. The other would be um, if it was a more permanent nature, they would amend the zoning resolution for additional time or change of time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple, yes, please. Qu couple questions. No, number one, uh, is, is that new addition going to be covered? Screened in and covered? Okay. He's going to go ahead and cover okay. that. <laughs> Thank you. And second, I got one other question. Uh, really not related to this specific thing, but qu immediately adjacent to this. On the site plan, you show the uh, anticipated addition of boat storage to the north. Yes. And, and I understand that's not part of this application. Correct. But, but my question is, would that expansion of the building for that additional boat storage require um, an application to uh, uh, amend or re require special exceptions, or is it all covered by existing zoning? It's covered by existing zoning, and within the Bonita Bay PUD ordinance, uh, one of the provisions that's in the ordinance is that if you're going to modify an existing site, you have to apply for what's known as final plan approval, or FPA. That is an administrative process, and that is what the marina had gone through last summer and into last fall, where this uh, where this addition for the deck was also put on the site plan. And with that, that is when we put the applicant on notice that if the intent is to drink in that proposed addition, you're going to have to go through the board for that specific approval. All right. Th thank you. So, so they may be proceeding with that boat addition also at the same time as far as construction is concerned. Yes, but again, one of the conditions that we have in here is for them to go back and modify that previous final plan approval because the square footage of the deck has changed from what was previously approved. Um, I want to piggyback on that. As I understand it, uh, that new, uh, as shown on the map here, that they are going to be adding a whole new business there. That they're uh, on the map uh, at one point it shows that uh, they're going to use part of the parking lot as an entrance for new boats to go into that space. It's my understanding that Fishtail Marina, where Marina is going to be operating a business out of there, and also that they're adding a uh, a club, uh, a boating club, to the to the marina. Are those two uses? Uh, are they required to come here or to city council or anywhere else? Excellent question. Because I, I think that there's an impact on the parking. And uh, in anticipation of that question, I went ahead and put a copy of the Bonita Bay PUD ordinance on here. One of the things 
uh, that you can see in your staff report is the zoning of the marina within the PUD is um, C3. That right. is the zoning. Correct. Within the Bonita Bay PUD ordinance, C3 is the marina and commercial area. And there are a list of uses that are associated with that, as you can see here. So again, this is, this is the ordinance that, that was passed. This is the zoning that is in place for Bonita Bay. And it's one of those instances where... So is this now the Bonita Bay declarations, or is it... This is their zoning. This is their zoning resolution. It, this it's is with this their is government. The it, it's the, the, when they came in for the original development, this is their original development PUD document from yes. 1981. Okay. And, and the uses that were approved by the county uh, are listed on here. And I, I personally have not heard of any of the new uses that were coming in. They have not yet come to staff. One of the things we would do, though, when they submit for permits is to check to make sure that the uses that are being requested are on this list. This, this is the list that we would use to determine because this is the list for the specific area of Bonita Bay in which this marina is located. R roll that up again, please. It looks sure. like a, a yacht club. Now the other way. Oh, sorry. R roll it down. Down, sorry. One of those bottom. Uh, oh, sales are there. Is that end, yeah, uh, you had a yacht, cl yacht clubs in there somewhere. The last, yeah, the last one. Right, number 31. Yep, number 34. Yeah. Yeah. That may answer your question. No, it does not because okay. there is the Bonita Bay Cruising Club, uh, which has uh, been in existence as long as the marina has. And I think that's the reference there. But in any event, I, here's my concern. The bottom line is uh, we may or may not have a right to talk about that at some later date. But what impact do those things have on parking? And is there before us on this application any question of parking? No. Or is it just Parking was looked at. Parking is something that is always looked at with every use that comes through our door. In fact, when we have the, when the uses come through our door, they submit for what's known as a commercial use permit. And that is what essentially serves as their occupancy permit for their specific business. We request that they provide us multiple things in addition to the application. They need to provide us a site plan. They need to provide us a parking diagram and also garbage collection. Um, we do check parking with every single commercial use that comes in. There are parking rates and standards within our code, and all these uses are vetted against that standard. In this particular case, because the parking is already there and the parking was in abundance and there's no net increase in seats, parking wasn't a concern. Okay. Are there any other questions before we proceed to the applicant? I'm going to ask my question because you said you would answer it. Absolutely. Uh, I tried to find out what on earth a Group 3 restaurant mm -hmm. is. I thought it would be under the Department of Business and Professional Regulation, but you sure. said it's local. So could you tell me what a Group 3 restaurant is? Sure. A Group 3 restaurant is just your standard restaurant seats. You come in, you sit down, you have somebody serve you. Um, it's not really built for uh, walk-up or pedestrian-style traffic. It's more on the lines of you drive in with your automobile, you spend a couple hours there, and you go home. It's the conventional restaurant style that we're all relatively accustomed to. In our land development code, uh, section 4-408 is an important section that identifies what all of these groups are. So when you're seeing zoning applications in the future and a request is for group two business services, well, what does that mean? LDC 4-408 provides those specifics. So that's, that's gonna be an important section to keep in mind for the future. I have a feeling that'll be coming up in the workshop as well. Right, so if, if you have to, uh, if you have to walk up, that's not a... a oh, no, no, well, just right? typically they, they sort of denote, uh, you know, your sandwich shops, which have little to no indoor seating, your stands, which are just that, they're just stands, your conventional restaurant, which most of us are accustomed to, you get in your automobile, you go to the restaurant, Maybe you have valet, maybe you don't. Somebody parks your car, you park it yourself. You spend a significant amount of time. Somebody typically serves you. You have your meal, you leave. That's, that's just the standard. Group three is typically the standard restaurant. Group Thank four, you. a little bit more intense. That's more along the lines of your, uh, your dinner theaters and, and those types of uses. 
but group three is just your standard. It's what Backwater Jacks is. You go in, you right. sit down, you have a drink, somebody serves you, you eat, have a nice time. Thank you. Mike. You're welcome. Any other questions? Sir? Thank you. For the record, James Inc., Inc. Works Coastal Design, and I have not been before the board since the last time we did entitlements for marina in, in the city, so I'm not here very often, and I'm always in awe of how prepared your staff is, and as a member of the city planning board, extremely jealous of having, you know, that you have this staff here and, and what you have to hear. Um, I just, after the presentation, I just got a few comments that I'd like to add in there. Um, the outdoor proposed seating uh, does not lessen the setbacks to any of the existing residential. It will be exactly the same going to the west, to the east, and to the south. Um, as far as the marina, yes, we are expanding the marina. We have, as part of this application, you saw a conversion of office space to get the 24 seats to the new area. That has been done, and there is a boat sales office in there, and there is a boat rental office. And on the PUD, if you notice, item 31, it allows for the sales and rental facilities for boats, motors, and accessories. So we feel comfortable that the use permit will be issued and it does not require having to come back here. Uh, to address your parking comment, this application doesn't uh, impact the parking, but when we went through the site plan approval, administrative site plan approval, we redid all the parking. Uh, we're gonna restripe and redo the parking such that we do meet the land development code parking requirements for all the uses that'll be in the facility when we add that barn. Um, this outdoor deck and barn is scheduled to start about May 1st is our schedule to do them both at the same time. We would have done the outdoor deck before this season, but the special exception tripped us up a little bit to come through the process. Um, we have applied for a building permit and to Commissioner Worcester, it is covered. It's going to be covered with a um, louvered system that is open during the day and then it, it, it rotates the louvers if it starts raining or gets too sunny automatically. Um, it's, it's something that you're starting to see in, in, in the more high-end communities and improvements of, of restaurant facilities. Um, with that, I'm open to any questions that you would have. Well, yes, let sir. me pick up on that last item. Are you gonna take the screening down on, on the adjacent, immediately adjacent uh, uh, screen walls and We're make taking, that into louvers also? We have the remote to put the seating. We'll put the seating one back up there. Or do I have to go back to? If you notice the, the sixth place table in the corner of the screen deck in the upper left, that will become outdoor. The screen will be moved over to that, that little corner on a 45 degree angle right where the S is on screen covered. So that the one, two, three, uh, seven tables on the inside of the screen cover will remain screened. And then the new 24 plus the six existing will become not screened that would be the louvered system and that would be the well the louvered system except the six top will stay under roof as it is presently got it thank you okay any other questions <clears throat> thank you thank you are there any other witnesses So before we vote, uh, is there anyone who wishes to make public comment? There being no public comment. Before you do your vote, one thing I forgot to do was to submit a copy of the application for the record. That's all. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I just put the clerk's office. 
and on file in case the public wants uh, on file with the clerk. Uh, I, I, I do have one further question here. Uh, let's talk about the noise here. Under this application, would they be permitted to have outdoor music at that, at that, uh, at the 360 square foot site? Fair question. We do have a noise ordinance in effect that is based on the decibel level and not where or, or the, the type of item that is emanating or making the noise. Uh, we also have a requirement that if you are going to have uh, amplified entertainment and if it's going to be permanent, we recommend the special exception process. You may remember that Lansdowne went through this right. similarly about a year ago yeah. to for their outdoor entertainment. Otherwise, if it's just like a once off or uh, something that you're having like a special event, there is a special event permit that allows for uh, sort of like a, a one time pass uh, for you to go ahead and, and, and have your amplified music within given parameters uh, of dates, times, things like that. And that's handled through the special events and communications department and approved by city council. I'm a little confused. W could they, uh, it's up, it's running. Could they uh, tomorrow put a band out there would, or would they need to come to you? If they're going to amplify the sound and if the amplification is going to... When you say amplify, you mean using yeah. amplifiers, playing horns and pianos and that that is governed by the decibel level. Well, it's, it's all governed by the decibel, but one of the triggers for whether or not it requires either a special exception or a special event permit is the amplification itself. So regardless, you have a noise ordinance that is based on a decibel level, regardless if it's talking, an automobile, or somebody playing a guitar. And that goes for commercial as well as residential. If you have a resident who's watching movies ridiculously loud all the time, you know, it, it can become a nuisance. So the noise ordinance takes right. that into account as well. So it covers, it covers the full spectrum. Um, what we find is when you have these uh, establishments that like to have their, their entertainment outdoors, that often, you often do that when you have a fair amount of, of people that show up on a regular basis. So because of that, you want the amplified sound right there, get your special exception. Unless, like I said, it's for a one-off event, 4th of July, something like that. You can request through the special events department to have a special event permit for just that event, which can include having the band come and play for just that event and not on a regular basis. Thank you. Please. Mr. Chairman, question for Mr. Inc. Um, looking at the uh, at attachment B, the, does this eliminate the, uh, the ramp, the... Uh, Handicap ramp? No, the handicap ramp will stay. And in reality, as part of the outdoor deck, we're going to rebuild that whole ramp area, railing area, update it, stainless steel cable. You know, the, the restaurant and the facility is going through a, a renovation process since it opened in 1991, which was just a little while ago. So it's, it's in the process of being updated. Any other questions? There being no comments. <clears throat> Roll call. Could there be a motion first? Oh, we need a motion. What are we voting on? <laughs> Is there a motion to? Uh, Mr. Chairman, and I'd like to make a motion to approve the submittal. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mr. Chairman, I will second. Comments? <clears throat> there being no comments, roll call, please. Barbara Crabb. Um, what do I say? Yes. Aye. Aye. Whatever. <laughs> Russ Wynn. Yes. Chairman Kerlander. Yes. Roger Brunswick. Yes. James Worcester. Yes. That's it. I want to thank you for making my first case so delightfully easy. <laughs> <laughs> They're not all this way. <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> so there is a. Uh, an, an opportunity here on our agenda for public comment. There being none. Uh, does any, before we adjourn, uh, do, do we have any of you or? have yeah. any further instructions for me about the yeah, workshop or? Like a, a 15 hour oh, excuse me. 
I failed to approve the minutes of the, uh, thank you very much, uh, September. Of the September 5th meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the, uh, the minute? Second. Thank you. Comments? Roll call. Russ Wynn. Yes. Chairman Kerlander. Yes. Roger Brunswick. Yes. James Worcester. Yes. Barbara Craig. Yes. So before we adjourn now, uh, any further, anything you, anybody want to say or any instructions you want to? I would really like to have out of the, um, the law that directs us as to what we're supposed to do, a very clear and set out list of exactly what our responsibilities are. I'm happy to do that or if the staff would want to do that because I think that's really important in structuring our conversation on the 23rd. Sure, and we have in the ordinance for the zoning board uh, the resolutions that, uh, first it was resolutions, then ordinance of what city council adopted for your responsibilities. Um, I can always give you the hard copies of the old stuff if you want. Well, I kind of would like to see it not all laid out, but in a list, one, two, three, four, five. So, I mean, if you don't want to do it, I'm perfectly happy to do it. That's the sort of thing that I pull out of stuff all the time. So. Sure. Okay. Uh, and if you have questions, I'll be happy to help yeah. you. Okay. That would be fine. I appreciate it. Is there anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? So motion. Second. Aye. Roll call. Uh, Chairman Carlander? Yes. Roger Brunswick? Yes. James Worcester? Yes. Barbara Craig? Yes. Russ Wynn? Yes. <clears throat> Meetings adjourned. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank that you, was Mr. Chairman. That was